This interview is supplemental material to a class looking at the work and impact of illustration and Disney art legend Mary Blair. The class is called Chasing Mary, and if you like what you hear, feel free to follow the link below to learn more about her work and how we can learn from Chasing Mary. Jeff, what do you do? What is your job? And just tell us about your career. Okay, hi. I'm Jeff Benito. I am traditionally, I would always call myself a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that with the parks for about 22 years now, Mm -hmm. uh, amongst other divisions. But my experience with Mary Blair has been primarily through the park. So for this purpose, I'm a graphic designer. I have been a graphic designer. But I've slowly moved into other things, including fine art. So at this point in time, I think I'm probably an illustrator. Although, if you ask me, I'm a graphic designer. Mm. So, story of the law. Mm. Yeah, uh, I, I get that. So, because you probably, you approach your illustrations in kind of like a graphic design way, but yeah. the finished product yeah, tends well, to be an illustration. Is that right? Yeah, you know, the thing is, is that as a graphic designer, obviously, you include images and illustrations and just slowly over time, I've just been using my own. Mm-hmm. So I started creating the illustrations to use in the design, and then those have kind of taken over. So that's how to morph into that. And I think a lot of that has to do with just graphic design in general. I started, it wasn't the computer. Now we're in the computers, and a lot of people can do that. So mm-hmm. being a freelance graphic designer, you know, you get jobs for what the need is. And I think there's probably more of a need to go outside for illustration. Mm. Uh, than graphic design these days. So I think that's probably part of it. Mm. And plus just the nature of that I've always drawn. You know, I've always been able to draw. I've always liked to draw. But growing up, I didn't really know how to make that a profession. So I did graphics because that's what I knew or knew what I could do eventually. And so I'm just kind of getting back to what I've always been able to do. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Well, you have, but you yeah. have a body of work. You sell things in your shop with your art on them. So yeah, in the last four years, I've become an artist, more or less, just in the fact that I've been creating art for illustrations, and it's just the nature of I've avoided it for so long, but I finally accepted it and mm-hmm. have gone with it. It's been successful. So the you know the more I do, the better it's going. So I do more. Cool. And you have some work at Wonderground, right? Tell us about that. Well, actually, that's why I am doing art for sale in the first place, because I had done a couple of pieces for the galleries in the parks, and then I kind of moved over to Wonderground because it was more in line with what I do, you know, more stylized, more graphic. And what they do at Wonderground is they have something called an artist residence. And so they have somebody there who's kind of, well, the artist resident for the month, every month. And when you go there, you do art specifically for the store in the location, and they release artwork that's Disney. But you also have a corner section of the store that's on consignment. And so you bring in non-Disney art, you know, your own personal art. And mm-hmm. the first time I did that, I didn't have any. So that kind of forced me to do art that was my own. Mm. That's cool. And I didn't, I didn't know what the, what the setup was. Yeah, you kind of get a you get a little pop up shop in the store in the gallery for the month, mm. and you know you supply it and it's on commission, but it can't be Disney. So bring in who you are, you know what you do on your own, and it forced me to kind of come up with something that was my own. Cool. How would you describe your own work? Well, you know, I started off not knowing because sure. I have been a graphic designer for a long time, so I've always solved other people's problems. Mm. And so I, that was the hardest part of this whole experience was trying to come up with who I am. And I think little by little I came to doing, well, first of all, I always just like happy stuff, just stuff mm. that makes you happy, that makes you smile, not too deep, to be honest, just mm. bright colors. And I ended up doing a lot of Hawaiian influence art because I spent a lot of time there growing up and I just have an affinity for it. So but recently I've been doing a lot of Tiki-inspired work. Cool. So um, I, just from seeing your work, I presumed that you were well aware of Mary Blair's work and uh, yeah. were influenced by it. So that was yeah. my assumption, but now you get to explain how Mary has influenced you. Well, you know, 
working for the parks, I've been doing that, like I said, for a long time. Just by the nature of you do research for a project and you, you know, like if you're doing a project for the castle, it's hard to, mm. or, you know, anything in the park, it's hard to not be influenced by something that she's touched and, you know, you look at it. But I think that for the primary time where I really thought about it and looked at it was for the 45th anniversary of the small world. Mm. I created products based on her art for that event. So I spent a lot of time recreating her work. So obviously, that, you know, when you're sitting there for hours recreating somebody's work, you start to think about it and really digest what it is. And uh, so that's kind of when that happened. So that was 45, I don't know when that was. It was about 10 years ago, let's put that way. Okay. And uh, so that's when I spent the most time kind of thinking about it. And I think what really kind of I took away from it the most part is color. You know, the shapes, the geometric shapes are obviously important. And ironically, I think that a lot of my stuff ends up looking like that. But in my mind, it's more from the primitive of the tiki and Hawaiian stuff. And it's kind of uh, come out in that way. And I'm sure it's like a, a subconscious level of creating the castle and the Mary Blair style for the park so long. And I've kind of stuck it in my head and morphed it into something else. But the color, in fact, the way that she uses flat color combined in a way that creates perspective there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And not using the general values of shade to, you know, if you have perspective, there's a couple ways to create perspective, and that's like size and shading and perspective. And somehow she's been able to do that without any of those traditional forms and really just through the use of color. And by still retaining mostly bright colors, she's able to create perspectives without muddying up the palette. So I think that's my biggest takeaway from her. Mm. Cool. And that, that sounds really tricky to articulate, let alone create, right? <laughs> Perspective <laughs> using still bright colors, but not shading, but there are some value shifts, it's very subtle. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. How she yeah, and, it, and it, it's a brief and the flat look of it all. You know, there's such, just that subtle, that subtle variation between creating something that's flat and has dimension uh, and interest is a, is a tricky thing. And she's, she was able to do it, obviously, by using black and, you know, darker colors, but they're still retained. The hues are still bright. The values are still intense. That's what's important to me. That's what my takeaway is. I mean, kind of, you've kind of already done this to an extent, but if you were to talk to someone about Mary Blair's work, how would you describe her work? Um, kind of fundamental. In the same way that, like, you know, like if she was painting, broke things down into shapes and, and planes, she took it one step further and, and flattened it even further. And then, like I said, uses the color to, and the shapes and the fundamental forms to create the meaning. That's kind of how I would describe it. Cool. So as part of the class, I'm, I feel a little intimidated admitting it because you would be much better qualified to do it, but we're going to do a little bit of a small world type exercise. How did you, I mean, I'm finding it difficult to keep, <laughs> to keep, to like wrap my head around how many colors, how many shapes, how they're abstracting uh, different locations. I mean, what was your greatest challenge when you were trying to work on that work? The biggest challenge is trying to project the imperfectness hmm. without going too far. And because when you look at it, when you first look at her work, it's, it's pretty perfect. You know, the shapes are perfect. The lines are pretty straight. But when you really get into it, it's that imperfectness that creates the interest. Mm -hmm. So capturing that, and, you know, when I was doing it, basically what I was doing is there's, she did flat paintings, right? So I'm taking this flat painting and creating camera-ready artwork from them. So I'm recreating them. And capturing that was the most difficult part of what I was doing. And you were doing that digitally. You're translating her paintings into uh, whatever program you use, Photoshop or Illustrator? Is Illustrator, it? yeah. Illustrator. Illustrator. Yeah. Basically, what I was doing is creating 12-color 
uh, illustration out of four color process paintings or you know reproductions of the paintings. So she had unlimited color. I needed to do them in you know twelve colors. Oh yeah. Okay. I gotcha. In my mind, I'd be thinking like fabric design or <laughs> I don't know something that. Well, yeah, on. it went on. It went on uh, fabrics. It went on uh, mugs. You know, think of the whole gamut of products, and that's the idea: is create, mm-hmm. recreate them so that they look good in all different reproduction styles. You know, so that that's mm-hmm. the challenge. That's why you know I was hired to do it. It's easy enough to just take your paintings and then you know print them. But unfortunately, that's not the best way to, to reproduce them, like on a T-shirt or on, on, you know, I forget what we did, pillows, towels, that kind of thing. And that was 10 years ago, and you continue to work with Disney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, on different products, on different things, uh, all the time. But, uh, yeah, that was just an isolated event that I was creating. You know, for that event, there was a Mary Blair, uh, they, a push, and they... And even it was like a corporate wide thing. The stores had their own Barry Blair uh, Small World book collection, and the parks did their own. Um, it was a like a, a company wide effort. Hmm. And I probably should have asked you this before saying this, but is it a compliment to you to be to have your work compared to Mary Blair's? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I would never. I mean, I'm assuming you. I mean, we never talked about it, but uh, uh-huh. just TV influences, obviously there's, but in instances like where I'm talking about the 45th that I've purposely created art to be like hers, and you know, there's been logos and things that I want to, um, you know, make it look like hers, but in the most part, I don't think about it, and I'm aware that I do it um, on a semi-subconscious level. But yeah, of course. I mean, I'm not comparing myself. I'm just talking about the, the influence, let's put it that way. I would never compare myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see it. And yet when I see your pieces, at least on Instagram, then I, I know they're yours, even though I follow a lot of other people that have uh, work for for or at Disney. Of course, your, your Tiki work stands out to me as like, oh, that's definitely Jeff's. Um, and... And kind of, uh, I think of the saucy mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, cool. Well, what or is there anything you're working on now that you're excited about that you want to tell us about? You know, I'm pretty excited about most of the stuff I'm doing these days because I'm doing more stuff that, you know, on my own. I have a, a new kind of interest in doing my own stuff, so that's what I'm right? doing. So I get to kind of do that on my own pace rather than me first. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I've been working on Mickey's 90th birthday, right? You know, it happens in advance, so it's actually starting to come out now. So I'm excited about that to hit the hit the public. Um, and then again, just more Tiki and uh, monsters and fire things that you know that I like. Yeah, and and where can people find your work? Um. At the Wonderground Gallery, obviously. Uh, I, I'm an Etsy shop. I do uh, events, you know, tiki events. I do that. But I also have, a, like, just coming out soon, I have a, a piece in a, a new Not Scary Friend exhibit they've started this year. So I'll have a piece in that. I'm going to be at Designer Con. I'm going to have a lot of stuff represented at Hotel Del Coronado this fall. So all over, mostly Southern California. 